Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. Man, it has been a while and today we're going to be looking into a hypothetical because hypotheticals are the best things in this game. Let's quickly grab the soul. Oh wait, we're already in the solar system. Isn't that fantastic? Today we are going to see what would happen if Jupiter were to deorbit, meaning just kind of lose its velocity. Uh, we'll simulate it by an impact with another body. Although, that would have to be a very big object that we would probably be able to detect, but let's go ahead and deorbit Jupiter. So what we'll do is we will... we need to get creative with how we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to slow down time, pause the game, and let's figure out... We know Jupiter is moving in this direction, that's one thing we need to know. And the other thing is we need to know its speed and its mass, so it's going to be one Jupiter mass, that's easy. But how fast are we moving, Jupiter? We are moving at 12.8 kilometers per second. So let's grab a new random gas giant. You're going to be Jupiter's worst enemy right here. Plop it down in front of Jupiter. We will go ahead and set its mass to 1 Jupiter. Or we'll do a little bit less so that it doesn't completely annihilate Jupiter. Or actually, we'll do 1 Jupiter but we'll lower its radius while keeping the mass the same. There we go. Lock, mass, lower, radius, great. And that will increase the density. Wow, math. Okay, so as this shrinks, which I can't pronounce its name at all, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to its motion. We're going to set its speed to the same as Jupiter, so 12.8. But we have to make it go in the opposite direction to cancel out the force of Jupiter moving. So we grab this arrow, or do we actually have to rotate the entire body? Or are you not letting me move it? Game. Come on. Maybe I have to let it move for a second. Uh, where is... There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, it lost all of its speed. Let's switch it back. 12.8. And now it's actually moving in the direction we want it to at the speed we want it to. Fantastic. Everything worked out perfectly. And now this is going to deorbit Jupiter. And we'll be able to see that. We can currently see the trajectory of... Uh, Jupiter and it's going to go or trajectory. I don't know why I said trajectory. <laughs> the trajectory of Jupiter and it's going around in a circle uh, because it's currently in orbit. And now when we hit it with its little foe here, there we go. Hopefully this is a clean hit. If it's not, it's going to mess with the uh, force. So we're just going to move this a little bit to make it a little bit more head on. Okay, that's almost perfect. We're going to move it up a tiny bit more. But this is going to be the collision we need. Jupiter, we can currently see its uh, force vector. And we can scroll out. And if we get out of edit mode, it'll show us Jupiter's direction. Or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't want to show me that anymore. Okay, Jupiter. That's kind of rude. I guess we'll see after it hits, though. We'll still have the force visible, because why not? We can see the arrows going that way. And when this hits, it should cancel out a whole lot of it. And here's the collision. So at the same time, I'll actually pull up the stat sheet for Jupiter. And let's look at the motion. We can see its speed, which is dropping very quickly. It went really high for a second, I don't know why. Uh, but here it goes. Look at it drop. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it's going in the other direction now. Oh no, it's gaining all that speed back. That's not what we wanted it to do. It should have canceled out perfect. Oh, wait. There it goes. 7, 24. Okay, this simulation's going a little bit whack. Mathematically, with the same mass and the same velocity, they should have canceled out. But instead, it's done much more than that. It's going to fling out of the solar system now. Um, 
So what we're going to do is, for scientific accuracy, we're just going to set it to something low. We'll set it to one kilometer per second, and we'll put it in the correct direction. Sorry, Jupiter, we're not letting you win this. Jupiter doesn't look very happy. Uh, Jupiter is having a little bit of an issue. <laughs> oh, great. It's going to start shrinking, too, uh, because of the amount of mouse collapsing on itself. Hopefully it doesn't get hot enough that it starts vaporizing itself. Uh, that would be a problem. That would kind of mess up our simulation. But I don't think it's quite hot enough for that. No, it's only 2,700 uh, degrees Celsius. And now Jupiter is deorbiting. Look at it go. We are going towards the center of the solar system. Now, we may actually mess with a few small objects around here. Now, the chances of it actually getting close enough to a planet to do damage is very slim. Hey, Earth, how's it going? Ooh, Mercury. Mercury may actually have a slight effect on its uh, orbit from Jupiter being that close. Nothing, like, noticeable, but it's very, very slight. And now, the moment we've been waiting for, it getting very close to the sun, this may actually vaporize Jupiter. Uh, 3,000 degrees, not close enough to do that. And we're going to go back. So, we're going to simulate if it had lost even more speed. Let's say it had been completely stopped. The match of the velocity was perfect. Oh, we're going by Venus. How's it going? <clears throat> this is it. Oh, it's going to get very close to Mercury this time. Nope, never mind. Mercury's moving a bit faster. And now Jupiter is going to collide with the sun, and we will see what effect this has on the planets. We're going to check on Earth, because Earth has the temperature we're used to here. Uh, where is Earth's temperature? Climate. 15.2 degrees Celsius. Let's see if this collision has any effect on the temperature of Earth. By messing with the sun. So we have hit... And let's see if anything goes a little bit off. Um, that's still within margin of error. Although it does look like it's heating up more than it's cooling down in the winter. Okay, so we may have made it a little bit warm. Yeah, so we have actually heated up. The sun, or, no, we've actually moved the sun. That's the issue. The sun is now moving in this direction, which is causing it to get closer to the planets. The planets are not adjusting themselves fast enough. Wow, the temperature is actually getting very high now. If this keeps going on, actually, we can see if the effect of this in the picture already if I can make it bigger maybe I can't nope they got rid of that I can't drag it over that's sad I can do this though uh, we can see the polar ice caps and how they're being affected almost going away and coming back completely now that's pretty normal but they're getting a bit smaller than average um, but it looks like earth is stabilizing it's no longer getting to that 18 degrees it looks like everything is back to normal. Now, if it was a bigger object that had hit the sun, it would have actually had an effect on it. Jupiter is pretty massive, but it's not quite massive enough to make a difference. But let's go ahead and simulate if it was. Let's give Jupiter a lot more mass. Let's give it 10 times its normal mass. Actually, let's make it 50 times. Let's make this real interesting. So now we have absolutely massive Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter on steroids. And Jupiter is going to hit the Earth. And now that you can actually see that the amount of material did actually change the size of the sun. And now the question is, how is that affecting us? Oh yeah, we can really see a difference. Earth now hitting 20... Five, six, seven degrees Celsius. I think it may be hot enough that the greenhouse effect is just going to hold in that temperature. It looks like the Earth is not 
in fact cooling down at all. There's no ice cap left. Now at 40 degrees, plants are starting to die. Okay, so let's grab Earth here and take a look. We have actually uh, started the apocalypse. This is going to end now. So now we are at almost 50 degrees Celsius. I need to throw that... Ah, they don't have Fahrenheit. Great, I can't relate. One moment. Let me see how... Uh, I'm too lazy to grab Google. I just know that's much, much hotter than normal. Oh, it's starting to actually cool down. A oh, never mind. It is continuing to rise. I thought we may have had a little chance at survival here, but the sun... And that's even when it's the furthest from the sun, too. 60 degrees. We're actually probably going to hit boiling soon. That is not something you want to live in. Boiling temperatures are not good for your skin or body. Some bacteria could survive this, though. Sulfur. Uh, loving bacteria. So let's continue over time because we are going to hit that point where everything died. Oh, wow. That is quite a change. It dropped very fast. Uh, the simulation accuracy really takes a dip when you make it go that fast. Great. So what we'll do is we'll add a little bit more to the sun. Hello, Jupiter. How's it going? We're going to feed you to the sun again. So we have nothing better to do. Oh, that's not a, what I meant to do. I meant to make you a little bit larger and then do it. Do do. Uh, we may accidentally make the sun supernova. At oh, okay. So that wasn't quite a supernova, um, but we did get, we did actually knock the sun out of its yellow phase. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. So now the sun is in fact blue. Which is going to make the Earth look slightly interesting, because the light is now blue-tinted. Wow, the oceans look so nice. Except the oceans are about to boil away, so I guess it doesn't matter. Look at the temperature rise. That's very quickly, too, considering it's five days per second. So, we're talking the average global temperature is going up, like, one degree every month or so. It's slowing down. It looks like the sun actually ejected enough material from that, though. You could actually see it that it is keeping the temperature from rising too far. Although, the sun is moving very quickly now. Uh, it gained enough velocity that it's actually pushing the planets closer together here. Very close to Mars. Wow, it's much easier to fund a Mars mission now. Um, our orbit is very messed up. Ooh, 80 degrees Celsius. 85. Oh, it's going to be over soon. Let's take a look at those oceans. There's the Atlantic right there. <clears throat> 90 degrees. Things start boiling very soon. 92 degrees. Dare I say 93 degrees. <laughs> okay, we're just going to raise the mass of the sun manually. No longer blue. Wow. Oh, I accidentally did a supernova. Whoops. Okay, may, may not have been a supernova, just a nova. So no big explosion. Things are getting very cold now, though, because the sun just kind of shrunk a whole lot. Whoops. Um. Great. I guess we won't be able to see the entire solar system just kind of die out. That's disappointing. Let's let's actually do a supernova. Here we go. Solar system. Let's just grab Jupiter. And we will deorbit Jupiter by just increasing its mass a ridiculous amount. Uh, we will turn Jupiter into a miniature star. And it will be the star of this video. Bad joke. Okay, so... Let's let this go up, up, up to Jupiter's 
three okay we're gonna speed this up a bit 50 jupiters 60 jupiters we're gonna let time actually move now so that jupiter can warm up as it compresses into itself 60 jupiters 70 oh it's a baby star now okay jupiter <clears throat> i'm now going to deorbit you Will you be able to get the sun too, Supernova? You are a small star now, so you have a bit more power. Uh, once Earth's in between the sun and Jupiter... Oh, the sun's being uh, attracted to Jupiter by gravity quite a bit. <laughs> show you guys something once we're here, though. Look at this. Because there's two stars on each side of the Earth, there's day, and then... Oh, it's not bright enough. That's like one of my favorite things to do, too. Well, technically, the other side of the Earth is slightly bright, so it's kind of like day and then just dawn on the other side instead of night. It's okay, Jupiter is coming very quickly, <clears throat> and we're not actually going to be able to see the effect it has on Earth. That's kind of disappointing. Oh, maybe you can. Nah, it's not really obvious. That's sad. Okay, so... Jupiter versus Sun. Da 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 dun. Da 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 dun. Jupiter. Very small star. Ooh, okay. That was a supernova. Congratulations, everyone's dead. <laughs> and by that, I mean every planet, too. They're just being ripped apart. And vaporized. Look at Saturn go, bleeding off all of its mass as it heats up to 13,000 degrees Celsius. But it looks like it survived. Slightly. Uh, Earth doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Neither do any of the close... I find it funny that Earth and all the rocky planets don't exist, but these asteroids somehow do. Uh, Universe Sandbox 2 team, could you explain... Oh, that is a beautiful render bug right there. It looks like the layering is a little bit off. And it rotates. It rotates even when the game is paused. What is this, guys? How could we explain such a thing? I, I had a feeling that the asteroids were just actually billboards, but that's actually... It's funny because I never actually uh, was able to figure that out. But now, now it's pretty clear that they are. Interesting. Now I know a little bit more about how they pulled off making this game. Well, guys, thank you for watching. I just want to know how they render these supernovas. It looks like they have a bunch of textures layered in different directions, but they did a very good job of it. It's very hard to tell that they're just a bunch of planes. It's very nice. I wonder if it's if it was like randomly procedurally generated, uh, too. That would be absolutely magnificent. But thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time. Let's let this supernova run its course. Oh, there it goes. And goodbye. Like the billions of people who just died.